Hello class, I want to talk to you guys today about the stages of literary appreciation. Um, I got a lot of my research material from Literature for Today's Young Adults by Aileen Pace Nilsson and Kenneth L. Donaldson. So according to Nilsson and Donaldson, literature, literary appreciation is gaining pleasure and understanding for literature understanding the value and importance of literature, as well as honoring, respecting, and or admiring the beauty and complexity of literature. It's so nice. It's like a librarian's dream. So just so we're on the same page, um, this is something that may come up again in class. Um, in literary criticism, there are two types of literature. We talk about literature in two different ways. We talk about literature with the big L, which is taken to mean the classic works that are critically acclaimed and considered exemplary, like Moby Dick or Pride and Prejudice or other things you had to read in high school English class. The second type is literature with a little L. So that's pretty much anything that's written, novels, plays, poetry, articles, etc. Um, it can mean, it can be taken to mean written works with popular appeal, like the latest Nora Roberts bestseller or a J.K. Rowling book. Nilsson and Donaldson state in their book that the stages of literary appreciation present an approximation of how individuals develop the personal attitudes and the reading, watching, and listening skills that are a necessary part of literary appreciation. So really what this is, is it's a developmental chart for reading. We can think about it in that way. So as we go through the stages, we see that each stage is characterized by an optimal age or grade level, sample literary materials, and sample actions or activities. The authors say that the stages are like a wedding cake. They get increasingly smaller. We add on to the levels rather than going through them. So we have everything that we had before, plus we have a new way of gaining pleasure and understanding. Think of it like, another way to think of it might be like a toolkit. You are constantly adding tools to your, to your kit. So let's start with level one. Level one encompasses birth to kindergarten or ages zero to five. It is the stage of understanding of pleasure and profit from written words and from visual and oral presentations. Some sample, sample literary materials include nursery rhymes, folk tales, picture books, television programs, and songs. Um, sample actions, kids may read signs for certain restaurants and food like the Golden Arches is McDonald's. They'll memorize favorite stories and pretend to read and they enjoy singing or listening to stories. Uh, Nilsson and Donaldson say that children who seem to get the most from their reading are those who've had opportunities for talking story and for having grand conversations, both with other children and with adults. Um, this is a stage where students need to be convinced that reading is worthwhile, that pleasure awaits them, and that there are concrete benefits to be gained. So. Uh, just a tip would be to make reading a social activity, have sh adults sharing, talking about reading with each other, but also talking about reading with their kids about maybe what they're reading or talking about what kids and adults are reading together. Level two is the primary grade, so it can be ages six to eight. It is the stage of learning to decode and developing an attention span. Sample literary materials include school reading texts, easy to read books, signs, and other real world messages. Some sample actions are taking pride in reading to parents or others. Um, your student may enjoy reading alone and has favorite stories. So this is a level of phonics where you're turning those squiggles on a page into meaningful sounds. Um, this translates, this stage translates into adulthood too. Um, like for instance, if an adult is tackling a new computer program or rereading a tax guide because you're getting ready for an audit, um, an adult will exhibit the same symptoms of concentrated effort as do children first learning to read. They point with their fingers, move their lips, return to reread difficult parts, and in frustration sometimes slam the offending booklet to the floor. Um, the authors also state that children are really undemanding at this stage. They're in a stage of unconscious enjoyment. 
Um, they're far more likely to turn to less challenging materials. Uh, parents worry that their children are wasting time, but nearly 100% of college students who say they love to read went through childhood stages of being addicted for months to one particular kind of book. So come on, guys, you remember this, right? Babysitter's Club, Nancy Drew, Junie B. Jones, Sammy Keys, Boxcar Children, American Girl, Encyclopedia Brown series books. Those are the kinds of formulaic books that children at this stage are really into. Level three is late elementary school, so ages nine to 11. Um, and the stage is losing oneself in literature. Some sample literary materials include series books, again, like the previous stage, fantasies, animal stories, anything one can disappear into, comic books. Um, some sample actions, uh, reads while doing chores, reads while traveling, makes friends with a librarian, checks out books regularly, gets into reading a particular genre or author. Um, this, this is a really important stage for students, especially if they're struggling with reading. This is the stage that we can lose them at. They might not make it to this stage. Um, we need to be aware of students who are struggling and make sure that they have the same opportunities to enjoy literature as students who excel at reading. Um, students may need time outside of school for reading, less screen time, I think we probably all hear that a lot, and no interruptions to reach this level. Reading can become a means of escape. Um, and the authors also caution that this level may not occur until much later than the fourth or fifth grades, or it may not happen at all. Level four, junior high, ages 12 to 14. The stage is finding oneself in literature. Some sample literary materials include realistic fiction, contemporary problem novels, and wish-fulfilling stories. Sample actions, a student may hide a novel inside a textbook to read during classes, stays up at night reading, we got that trusty flashlight, and uses reading as an escape from social pressures. At this stage, the more experience students have with literature, the more discriminating they become. If they have read a lot, they're not going to be happy with whatever schlop you want to give them. They are very particular. They have to respect the story. It has to be real. The characters can't be stereotypes. They want to know why something happened. Because they're reading to find out about themselves, to find lives that are much like their own. But they are also curious about the other sides of life, the bizarre, the unbelievable, the grotesque. So this might be a, a stage where you see kids looking for stuff about the paranormal or p other religions, that kind of thing. Reading is used as a means of discovering identity. Level five is high school, ages 15 to 18. And it's the stage of venturing beyond the self. Sample literary materials include science fiction, social issues fiction, forbidden material, different stories. Um, sample actions. The, the student may begin to buy his or her own books, see movies with friends, get reading suggestions from friends, reading beyond school assignments. Um, students are going beyond egocentrism. They're looking at the larger circle of society and looking at issues like conformity, social pressures, justice, human weaknesses and strengths. Um, they are, it's more than just developing an advanced set of decoding skills. So going beyond just like, reading stuff that's tough um the this is it's, it's this stage is closely tied to intellectual physical and emotional development so students reaching this level is dependent upon those things as well uh, readers may come back from a few hours and imagine society with new ideas about their own society so we're focusing on the reader's our psychological needs in relation to, soci to society. Level six is college age, um, 18 to adulthood. Um, the stage is reading widely. So sample materials are gonna be bestsellers, acclaimed novels, poems, plays, fiction, magazines, literature with a capital L and literature with a little L. Sample actions, um, people will talk to talk about books and films with friends, join a book club, gather books to take on vacation. 
Um, this is treated a lot with a lot with level seven. Level six and level seven are often described together. Um, level six is the foundation for level seven. Um, level seven is uh, adulthood to death, and it's the stage of aesthetic appreciation. So sample literary materials include classics, significant contemporary books, films, and drama. Uh, sample actions. Someone in this stage will be reading constantly, dreaming of writing the great American novel, enjoying literary and film criticism. This person reads many books a year, sees plays, revisits favorites. It's someone who is just going to be your standard avid reader, really. So looking at these different stages, um, some things that we need to take away from this discussion are um, teachers and parents need to make sure that they are meeting young people where they are and help them feel comfortable at that stage before trying to move them on. Um, again, students need to find pleasure in reading wherever they are in reading. They, we can't force them along or they will stop enjoying it. People at any stage need to experience pleasure and profit from their reading, viewing, and listening. People who feel they are not being appropriately rewarded for their efforts may grow discouraged and join the millions of adults who no longer read, view, or listen to materials for personal fulfillment and pleasure. I just read a scary statistic that said that one in four Americans read zero books per year. So let's just keep this in mind when you're dealing with people, dealing with young people and reading.